So we're in the theater for this look, and uh, first we're gonna go ahead and talk about the concept. Now, this is not an entirely conceptual shoot. A lot of the things we do have like a story behind them and everything like that, where we're kind of creating characters. In this case, we're using Glenn, who's, that's your real name, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're using Glenn, and uh, we're basically capturing kind of like who he is. And the whole point of the shoot, um, the whole concept, if you will, is to capture like a real person and make him, you know, make him look like a, a cool person. But these are all his clothes, you know, these are these are things that he would be doing. Um, so we found a couple locations that would be somewhat similar. Glenn's in the entertainment industry, and uh, so that's why we're at a theater right now. Um, he's not like a, you know, a theater for performer, but it, uh, I think it fits at least loosely. So. In, in this location, I mean, the whole idea was just to create some like very good kind of like classic looking shots that, that do capture Glenn. And uh, we wanted to go with a style that's uh, a little bit darker. So that's why we're shooting in a really dark location, also with a shallow depth of field. So what we wanted to do is use lighting to make what basically is just really just like kind of like a rundown theater look really, really cool. So we're using lighting as, a, as well as a combination of a shallow depth of field to kind of really focus on Glenn and make everything else around us. It, it could look like it's a very expensive, nice theater. It, it doesn't have to, but the whole idea is that by pushing everything out of focus, uh, it's gonna really focus in on Glenn and you don't have to pay attention to what all this stuff is. It's just kind of surrounding. So it's an environmental portrait, again, focusing on Glenn. Now, as far as props go, we do want this to be like a really kind of dark shoot in which we have a couple key lights with that have gels on them to kind of like define our subject. So that kind of like, it goes down to every single little detail, uh, down to the fact that we're wearing, Glenn's got like a, a relatively reflective leather jacket on. What that's gonna do, it's, it's a dark leather jacket and it's going to pick up all those nice little highlights and bring him kind of like out of the dark. If he was wearing like a white shirt and like light colored jeans and like white shoes, we actually started off wearing pretty light light shoes and uh, they were just a little bit distracting so we want almost all that to kind of like blend in because it's going to fit our environment so again this is glenn's own clothing which is it's cool that you own cool clothes so <laughs> good job on that um but we also we also um built the entire photo shoot around glenn we met before talked about you know kind of his look and feel and his style talked about some of the images that he liked and then we're emulating those so that comes down to the clothing as well now, as far as props and things like that, oftentimes it's a lot more interesting if you can grab a prop. Um, you know, for this shoot, he was just kind of laying back, but we brought in these matches. Do you want to show off the, the box of matches? There we go. You guys know what a box of matches look like. Um, and it, it really just brought in two elements. Uh, the first thing it did is it gave us a prop, so something of interest, and it also gave something uh, that Glenn could actually like interact with. Uh, as a subject, especially Glenn's not a professional model, um, it, it can be a little bit tough to just interact with nothing, you know, just like posing from nothing is it, that's harder than like actually doing something. So it helps, you know, it helps whoever we're photographing feel a little bit more comfortable, gives them something to do. The second thing, which was pretty interesting, it actually provided a light source in this image. So we do have some lighting set up around, but the match when lit provided a second light source as well, or a second type of light that was actually going to light Glenn's face as well. So not only is it a prop, but it's also a light source too, which is kind of like win both ways in that one. For this shot in particular, the lighting and the camera settings are a little bit closer merged than some of the other shots. Uh, what we're doing is we're actually balancing some of the ambient light in the room with some of our strobes. It's a little bit tough because it is incredibly dark here. Now, what we did is we rented this uh, Canon, it's a 35 millimeter 1.4 lens. And the whole idea of the shoot, I wanted to shoot with a shallow depth of field today. So we are shooting at 1.4. Now that's going to let in a lot of light. It's still so dark in here that we're not able to get as much light as we need until we bump up our ISO. So our ISO, we're shooting at 400. So 1.4 at 400 and our shutter speed is one over 30th of a second. Now, if we didn't have an option, if I didn't want my ISO to be 400, let's say I was not going to compromise. I wanted to go 200. Um, we would have had to use a lower shutter speed. The reason I didn't want to do that is because if Glenn's moving just a little bit, even a 30th of a second is pretty tricky. Like if you go much slower than that, you're going to see some movement from either like camera shake if you're not incredibly uh, sturdy with your camera or your subject. If he, if he moves his head just a little bit, it's going to be out of, it's going to have some motion blur in it. So 
30th of a second is really about as slow as I would want to go on a portrait of a person. If you're taking a picture of a still life object, something is not going to move, that doesn't really matter. So what we had to do is we had to use a slow shutter speed with a very low aperture, 1.4, and a relatively high ISO. So that's letting a lot of light in from our ambient, which gives us this really nice background effect in these images. We, we really do want to be able to see this. But the tricky part is when balancing our lighting is these lights that we're using strobes today, they're made to kind of like put out a lot of light. And we can't just use the modeling lights because they have gels on them. So if you just use the modeling lights, the gels will melt. So we do need to use the strobes, but we need to use them at the very, very lowest power. So we have three lights today and all three are at the lowest power possible. Now when using your strobes and you need to get a really low power, you can do a couple things. You can stack a couple gels onto this strobe and that's going to just lessen the amount of light that comes out because it's got to travel through a gel. If you don't want to change the color, you can get a neutral density gel, which is going to lessen the amount of light but not change the color. You can also work with distance. We started off with a beauty dish a little bit closer to our subject and we had to actually like move it back. And you can see right there, it's not even facing towards our subject. It's got a tiny bit of fall off coming from the very edge and that's hitting just the rim of Glenn. So that's, that's why it's facing in that direction. You're like, well, that's a very unconventional lighting setup. And the reason is even after putting gels and everything, it was just too powerful. So that's creating a small little rim on this side of Glenn. Now there are other two lights we have. They're actually behind the camera here that I'm pointing at. We have a light in a parabolic reflector and that's again at a very low power. That's got uh, three, it's got a uh, three quarter CT, or sorry, it's a three quarter teal gel on it. And that's just pushing a little bit of light into our ambient. It's gonna make our ambient a little bit brighter and give it a little bit color, of color as well. We've got another light over here and that's bare bulb with a teal gel on it. And that's what's giving Glenn this really nice rim look. We shot bare bulb, so it's gonna, low, it's gonna hit the back wall. It's gonna hit every one of these things. And it's not necessarily gonna look like he's lit from a quote unquote strobe because a lot of the time strobe lighting is you know relatively directional. So if you want something to look a little bit more natural, using bare bulb is a great way to get that look. Now, as far as composition and posing, we're shooting relatively wide angle. This is a 35 millimeter fixed lens, so there is no zoom on it. And I wanted to shoot with this lens, so we're basically just making it work for using a 35 millimeter fix. So we're getting pretty close to our subject. I mean, we were shooting within like two or three feet from our subject, basically for the entire photo shoot. That's gonna give us a couple of things. It's gonna give us a little bit of distortion, but it's also gonna give us a very shallow depth of field when shooting at 1.4. And because we are so close, it's a little bit wide angle lens, I'm still able to get most of our subject in the composition. So we're angling him off a little bit to the left. We have some really nice lights on the ceiling. I didn't wanna shoot down on Glenn because I wouldn't see any of the details here in the ceiling. So instead the camera's coming down and shooting at an upwards angle. It's giving him, you know, kind of like a hero effect. Um, if you shoot from above, it makes people look small and less powerful. Shoot from below, it'll make people look taller and more powerful. And not only that, but it's capturing all of our lighting up above, which is just making the shot quite a bit more interesting. Now, as far as posing, um, Glenn was pretty much taking care of that. Um, we just said, go with something a little bit, you know, just natural. He's like, you know, um, happy crossing his legs, you know, just kind of like leaning back in the chair, just doing whatever feels right. And um, I, I think that's really important, especially, I mean, sometimes you want like a high fashion image where someone's doing a crazy pose, but for something like this, if, uh, if it's something that they would actually be doing, it's probably gonna look a lot more natural. If it's something that looks like, wow, we would never ever do this, um, you know, or if it just feels really uncomfortable, that's probably something you wanna stay away from. So you, you just, we talk back and forth with the subject. Does this feel comfortable? Is this something you would actually do? If it's not, don't try to force it. You could just change, you know, change the seating location or things like that and um, get a little bit more natural with that. So as far as composition and posing, both of them are pretty natural. The composition, again, we wanna include the ceiling and uh, posing, we just kept it like, you know, just like this. He's supposed to be himself and just a guy sitting in a theater. It's not, <laughs> we're not trying to like make him super high fashion or anything like that. And that, that really is what works. So whenever you're doing designing a shot like this, just make sure all those elements kind of come together to make sense in this. So we didn't want to over light it. We didn't want it to be like beauty lighting. We wanted a shallow depth of field. We wanted to make it look like he's actually in the theater that we're just capturing that moment. And all of those things are just kind of like leading towards a more natural portrait. And um, they all come together to create the final shot. So if any of those elements are out of place, like if there was a beauty dish, like, you know, here and like a couple of rim lights out of it on him, it wouldn't look natural, it would look more posed. So make sure when you're designing a concept 
that you have the idea of what you want the final image to look like and the, the mood and the feel, and then design all those elements around that. We had a pretty good idea of what we wanted for the shot, so it didn't really evolve that much. Uh, Glenn was basically sitting in the exact same position almost the entire time. Uh, we changed camera angles a little bit. I'm not shooting on a tripod here to be a little bit more free. The real evolution came with our lighting, uh, moving things and kind of placing them to make it feel a little bit more natural. And uh, especially like with this light back here, kind of like swinging it around so we get just a little bit of light on our subject. We don't want to over light him. So that was kind of like the progress through the shoot and how it evolved from beginning to end. Guys, thanks so much for checking out this behind the scenes. We hope you enjoyed a ton and I can't wait to see your environmental portraits.